And what a glorious Tuesday it is. Possibly the greatest Tuesday in the history of Tuesdays. And why is that, you ask? Well, I'll answer. I woke up this morning to find out the new Superman, bisexual. <laughs> Finally, as powerful as a locomotive, able to leap from women to men in a single bound. <laughs> I have not been this excited since I learned the true identity of the Joker. <laughs> no. He's scary. Now, it's, really, it's not really Superman as in the original Superman. He's retired, living in Hoboken and buying gold from William Devane. This is uh, John Kent, Superman and Lois Lane's son. He was Superboy for a while before Dad said, hey, time to become a man and then immediately got canceled for using gender stereotypes. <laughs> so he became Superman, and he hooks up with a young male journalist, don't we all? Yeah, so Superman, <laughs> Superman is bi, and I say it's a long time coming. Jimmy Olsen, it was worth the wait. Because if there was, <laughs> if there was one thing that was important to me as a 10-year-old reading comic books, it was who the characters were sexually attracted to. Oh yeah, it drove me crazy. I needed to know who Batman was sleeping with, you know, other than Robin. <laughs> I mean, you know, calling him the boy wonder, it kind of made me wonder. <laughs> and he couldn't be sliding down that bat pole just for fun. <laughs> I also wanted to know if the Archies were into bondage. And I just assumed Aquaman was into water sports, thus the rubber sheets. True, <laughs> I hadn't even reached puberty yet. I'm still waiting, in fact. But it pained me to think that our fictional superheroes were trapped in traditional sex roles. Spider-Man could swing between buildings, but he couldn't swing both ways. <laughs> Sad. Ever since I was a kid reading comic books, I saw that they had more boots, gloves, and masks than a leather shop in the West Village. It was like Brit Hume's closet. And yet... I was as frustrated as a porcupine in a balloon factory. Where were the superheroes who reflected who I was? A sexually confused young boy with acne, no friends, and an obsession with macrame. It wasn't about finding something outside my life, but something that reflected my life, right? Because if they don't reflect my lifestyle, then I can't possibly enjoy it. Every movie has to have someone like me in it, or I refuse to watch it. Sure, some comic characters shared traits with me. Scrooge McDuck was wealthy but didn't wear pants. <laughs> Astro Boy was short but looked great in red boots and black shorts. <laughs> Luke Cage looked great in jeans without a shirt. He's as shredded as a bag of Sargento mozzarella. We shared that in common. Mm, no pants, awesome abs, red boots. I just described Kill Me at the last FNC Christmas party. <laughs> My point is... Who really gives a damn? No kid cares or wants to care about who Superman is kissing. The guy is faster than a locomotive and able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. I think that might pique a kid's curiosity more than what or who he hooks up with. Especially since kids who read comic books usually don't have sex until their early 30s. <laughs> But it raises a question, why is this happening? Why is this being forced into a medium where it's not necessary? It's like announcing they have gluten-free crusts at a pie-eating contest. Nobody asked, nobody cares. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. It's not for the consumer. It's for the companies to cover their asses. There's a desperate need to virtue signal to those who don't even read comic books as a way to protect companies from being criticized for their past. And the criticism is always the same. Lack of diversity, something you never hear about in the NBA. But companies end up trying to please people who don't even use your product. You see this with ESPN. That network sucks because it keeps lecturing sports fans in order to appeal to a crowd that couldn't tell the difference between a jockstrap